Hello everybody, this is PC here from Global Alpha Search. I hope summer finds you well. Uh, we're uh, just finishing uh, July, so I'm coming with a usual monthly portfolio update. Let me just present my screen and we'll move on. So uh, the major question we want to ask this uh, month is whether the bottom is in. There's been many calls for the bottom, for the bottom to be in already, uh, including Mr. Lee from Funstruct, which have basically gained quite a bit of traction over the uh, recent years. Uh, there's been many calls for it to be just another uh, bear market rally. So before we answer any kind of question like this, I'd uh, rather look at the data, the data that we already have uh, in front of us and uh, make a more um, intelligent judgment uh, at the end of the presentation. So let's just move on. Quick overview of the portfolio uh, this month. Uh, the synthetic internal benchmark was up 4.8%. Uh, our portfolio was up 2.8%, uh, whilst the S&P 500 was up as much as 9%. Uh, we underperformed for a clear reason uh, of not being uh, fully invested right now, uh, according to our strategy, we are keeping a relatively big cash balance and we are less than 50% uh, allocated to equities right now, uh, as we are in the boom phase. Uh, so we naturally uh, will underperform in this kind of um, environment, but uh, this is all at the uh, aimed at uh, minimizing um, volatility. Uh, as you possibly saw, many uh, PIs uh, have uh, basically their risk scores uh, increasing to kind of unacceptable levels. And uh, I do uh, definitely want to avoid that. So uh, we're just concentrating on basically keeping the uh, risk score at a reasonable level, uh, which is currently four on average uh, for July, it was four and maximum was also four. So uh we kind of okay here uh in terms of allocation pure stocks is 38 percent uh with equity etfs it's 46 percent the etf we're having uh exposed uh, to stocks right now is the splv which is uh the low volatility s p 500 uh etf uh, so this kind of uh, acknowledges the the idea of concentrating on uh, equities uh, that naturally uh uh, have shown uh, lower historical volatilities uh, and also have uh, lower implied volatilities going forward as well. Cash buffer is pretty high right now, 41%. Uh, ex in terms of exposure, uh, the total equity exposure is 68%. Uh, this constitutes uh, of stocks and TSPLV ETF, of course. Treasuries, uh, we're 22%, so still below the 30% benchmark, but higher than the, than last month because I decided uh, to increase uh, our uh, long here, as I think uh, for now, uh, the yields, the 10 year yields uh, have made a top and uh, this kind of was confirmed. Uh, in July, uh, as uh, the 10 year yield fell to 65% to from uh, almost 3.2%. Uh, so, kind of a big, uh, big plunge here uh, for the reasons that we will uh, uh, talk about in just a little uh, second. Uh, in terms of reshuffles uh, in equities, we have made no trades uh, this month. Uh, we uh, put out a small long in gold, which we closed at a at a small profit, cash buffer is still pretty high. So uh, underperformance this month, outperformance this year, still for um, pretty much similar reasons. So good positioning in the first quarter, hedging in the first quarter, allocation generally have, uh, being lower uh, from the start of the month, of the year, sorry, and uh, lower than benchmark uh, allocation to long-term treasuries and gold. Uh, as I have mentioned, uh, in terms of treasuries, we, are, we have increased uh, our holdings right now and our exposure is uh, currently 22% at the end of the month. Uh, gold behaves in a different and strange way in, uh, in terms of 
the comparison of uh, how gold should be performing uh, versus historical standards of the kind of general macroeconomic environment we're seeing right now. So <clears throat> for whatever reason, uh, given the fact it's not performing as it, as it should, uh, I still uh, keep uh, our gold long underperformed uh, and prepare to just keep cash instead of it. Uh, major market drivers uh, last month. Uh, the Fed's work uh, done in demand destruction started bringing results. That was clearly seen uh, already uh, in June, and uh, it played keep playing out uh, in the month of July as well. Uh, as I've mentioned, the, the ten-year Treasuries uh, slumped forty percent this month to two sixty-five from three fifteen uh, at the start of July. Commodities stayed at subdue levels after June sell-off as well, which is uh, clearly something the Fed wants to see, as uh, commodities have been um, one of the major reasons for what we call the supply-side inflation that is uh, that we are facing right now, including the Fed. Right, so they they have no such uh, power over it. Uh, meaning that they do not control commodity prices, but what they can do is basically uh, distract demand and that's what they concentrate on and it has already uh, started bringing uh, appropriate uh, effects. The FOMC meeting uh, this month uh, brought a 75 basis point, uh, points hike. This was in line with the expectations. What, what, what was not in line with the expectations was a Pretty, pretty, pretty dovish uh, Fed, uh, Fed chair statement, um, which uh, kind of brought the market to thinking that we are already behind the peak hawkishness. Uh, and there's many reasons for this. The, the, the statement, as I, as I read it, is clearly much more dovish than uh, the last one. Uh, so given the fact that the Fed starts to be seeing the effect of their work, they don't want to just be killing the markets uh, for, for the sake of it, but they'd rather uh, kind of sit back a little bit right now, see, stay data dependent and see how things develop. Uh, so I think this is their major attitude right now. Meanwhile, the second quarter results uh, kept surprising to the upside with a majority of optimistic outputs. There's been pockets of softness here and there, but on aggregate, the um, stocks that uh, have uh, the companies that have reported their numbers for the second quarter uh, for now have uh, given pretty strong outlooks for the rest of the year and that included the mega cap tax names like uh, like apple and some others so this this is really something that's um, kind of uh, built into the narrative of uh, soft lending being uh, doable by uh, by the fed so we're not seeing this is very important we're not seeing a decrease of um, forward uh, EPS for, uh, forecasts uh, by the market consensus. And this is important in terms of uh, devaluations because the E will, will the forward E will just not uh, go down from here, at least for now, judged on what we have seen in the second quarter numbers so far. And the analysts uh, will not uh, keep decreasing the the, they forecast that earnings and they target uh, prices and so on and so forth, meaning the current valuations of roughly 16 times seem pretty uh, fundamentally uh, okay-ish in terms of long-term uh, averages for the S&P 500. And uh, uh, this, this bodes well for, for the stocks uh, going forward uh, for the rest of the third quarter, I think. This made a perfect tailwind uh, for extremely oversold stocks to rebound with growth obviously leading the way as um, the yields kept uh, going lower. Uh, all that fitted into the Fed's narrative of a soft landing, as I have already said, and even though we got a second back-to-back -back ne negative GDP reading, which was down uh, 90 basis uh, points for the second quarter on an annualized rate, the Fed keeps downplaying this and uh, using different media. They just uh, keep uh, preparing the market for them to kind of accept lower growth for longer, but not uh, kind of uh, go into this uh, spirit spiral of uh, believing that the recession is already here and um, 
you know, the earnings are uh, going to be uh, dramatic going forward. And, uh, you know, as we are seeing the numbers so far, uh, they're kind of okay-ish. We'll see how it plays out for, for the rest of the S&P 500 stocks. But uh, as of now, uh, the numbers really do uh, look uh, optimistic. And they have the reason for... Uh, for the market consensus not to be downgrading their forward uh, earnings estimates. Fed overview, June versus July. Uh, in June, we got a 75 basis points uh, rate hike. Uh, and uh, there was a pretty good ground laid for another 75 basis uh, hike in July. And we got it obviously uh, in the last uh, week of uh, July, 75 basis hike. But uh, the chair Powell uh, just mm, put out a very dovish statement, as we have already said, and prepared the market for a period of slower hikes, uh, as he called it. So in this way, he kind of built the uh, peak hawkishness narrative, uh, uh, which the market uh, liked a lot. Uh, they also pledged to stay data dependent uh, for them to uh, be able to react in uh, case things go bad again in uh, in autumn but uh, for now uh, the fed clearly wants to wants the market to be uh, thinking that uh, we are at or behind peak hawkishness uh, already uh, the fed uh, thinks or mr powell uh, thinks the economy is not in a recession but prepares the market for a period of slower growth and acknowledges indicators of spending and production have softened so this is already in the prices. Uh, we have been seeing those uh, indicators softening for quite a while right now. Uh, so this is kind of nothing new, but it uh, kind of made the market's belief uh, of peak hawkishness uh, kind of even be bigger, right? But the uh, very uh, interesting thing is uh, the last one, uh, it's about the QT, so the quantitative tightening. Uh, it actually goes at a pace much slower than uh, uh, pledged by uh, the Fed. Uh, as I have checked the total assets uh, of the uh, Fed today, uh, the difference between the uh, the assets uh, peak, which was in April this year, uh, versus right now is only $75 billion uh, to the downside. And uh, uh, the Fed has pledged a $95 billion per month uh, of quantitative tightening starting July, and we're at the uh, starting June, sorry, and we're now at the end of July. So, as you clearly uh, can see, the Fed wants the liquidity to stay in the market as long as it uh, sees destruction, demand destruction effects in commodities and some other problematic spaces like uh, the crypto space or uh, the, the most speculative stocks and spaces. So, the Fed is okay with uh, keeping the liquidity as long as uh, it generally sees uh, you know, the bubbles bursting and the general uh, aggregate uh, demand destruction effects, uh, as, they, as they call it. Uh, quick look at the inflation tendencies in July, 11 out of 18 up versus last month, uh, the GOX that we're uh, kind of mostly following, it was 12 in June. So a little bit of an improvement here, although the headlines are still pretty scary both uh, on a year on year and month of month basis, uh, the readings for uh, June, so the readings that we actually got in July were uh, higher than the expectations, but uh, all in all, it can be said that the CPI is still at extremes and above expectations, but the Fed down plays it, seeing what's happening with commodities and yields because they, it's here where they uh, want uh, or they expect to see what they want to see right so this is the, their major measures of whether they are actually impacting the general price pressures uh, uh, or not and as it, as it looks of now they do because both commodities and the yields are actually uh, lower uh, commodities. Quick look at uh, what happened in commodities, commodities July versus June. Uh, not many changes in terms of year-on-year -year, uh, performance. Uh, there's some uh, commodities that are higher uh, on uh, year-on-year -year versus June. Uh, there are some that are lower. On an aggregate basis, commodities stayed flattish to maybe marginally up in uh, the month of July. Uh, 
well, the, the bottom line is that the crude is uh, lower, right? We, it was up 41% year on year in June. Right now is uh, up 33% uh, year on year. So this is something that is naturally uh, a good, uh, good basis uh, for uh, improvement in CPI readings, uh, given uh, how much uh, crude oil weighs in the general CPI basket. Forecasts and expectations, we're still in the boom phase. A quick look at the coincident indicators that we follow. Private payrolls are um, four spot nine percent right now. They were tiny about 5% in terms of year on year changes last month. Uh, so kind of an, a little bit of a weaker reading here, but still a reading that is way above um, recessionary levels uh, according to um, the enhanced aggregates spread model by Dr. Robert Dealey from No Spin Forecast that we're using. Same thing with industrial production. And in terms of uh, Delta Delta, it's up 27% uh, right now. Uh, the only uh, constituent that is uh, in the uh, boom phase right now is kind of in the, contraction phase uh, is the S&P 500 because it's down uh, year on year, but uh, the, all the other constituents of Delta Delta and all the other coincident indicators are generally uh, still uh, in, a, uh, in a phase where it cannot, they, can, they do not confirm a peak uh, in the macroeconomic environment uh, just yet. So the boom phase continues to develop, soft landing is still possible and that's the way the Fed wants to play it out. Uh, a soft, so I call it a soft Fed put, uh, Fed put is still uh, there if you, if you wanted to call it this way, right? So uh, this, is, this is something that we saw uh, in uh, July with the FOMC statement that uh, kind of got much more dovish uh, once the Fed saw uh, the demand destruction effects uh, happening. Uh, base case uh, for now, in terms of our investments, it'll, it's, we are in the boom phase. My own view is that uh, according to our macro forecasting, sorry, my own view and according to our macro forecasting tool, uh, this is still not a recession. I have never ever seen a recession with uh, uh, three and a half or three point six percent uh, unemployment rate. So uh, both the labor market and our uh, our macro model that we use do not confirm that we are actually in a recession. We are seeing two quarters of uh, negative uh, growth. We do, but uh, this is not confirmed by uh, the labor market and the considered indicators uh, in terms of year-on-year -year changes in the. GDP, we're still uh, growing. We're growing much slower at a much slower pace, and that's what the Fed wants us to uh, to see. Uh, and that's the the bottom line for their um, soft landing scenario. Uh, the ten-year versus Fed funds uh, uh, spread is not has not inverted yet. Uh, please do remember that um, in the enhanced aggregate spread model, this is the kind of input that we're using. Uh, the ten-year, the two-year to ten-year tenors uh, keep compressing. Some of the spaces uh, are already inverted. So uh, the, the way I read it is that there might be bigger troubles ahead in uh, 18 to 24 months out. But uh, at this point of time, uh, the model inputs. Uh, which are the monthly averages of the 10-year yield and the Fed funds to be exact, not the month and readings, but the averages uh, uh, for each month, uh, they do not confirm inversion. So we're, I'm expecting this year's peak downside volatility is behind us, but I do still think that autumn might be pretty bumpy uh, due to potential energy shocks. Uh, as you'll possibly still know the situation with the Russian uh, gas deliveries uh, to Europe uh, are very uh, is very intense and uh, pretty unpredictable. So things might change pretty quickly. But uh, for now, uh, the bottom for the year might actually be in. Uh, but positioning uh, needs to stay defensive, in my view, as things unfold in a less predictable way this, uh, these days. Bottom line is that the forward EPS are not uh, getting slammed. This is kind of the most important thing for, 
for the next big move higher on lower uh, uh, in stocks, right? We have already seen uh, the prices uh, going down because of higher uh, price of money with the rates going higher. So the PEs uh, compressed to levels so that we're seeing right now. But I do strongly believe that the next move lower, uh, like say another 20% from here, which is pretty typical from uh, heavy bear markets, would be followed not by further compression of the uh, of the prices uh, of stocks uh, driven by the uh, by the cost of money, but they would be basically uh, driven by uh, the the fall of the of the forecasted uh, earnings, uh, which would only happen if we had a uh, wide uh, consensus change in the forecasted earnings. Uh, this would obviously uh, make the denominator of the PE go much lower. And again, the PEs would be unacceptably high, so the, the prices would need to adjust lower then. But uh, for now, we're not seeing this. The second quarter numbers do confirm uh, that uh, the, the corporations are still okay. They are mostly giving pretty optimistic outlooks, and this underlines the idea that the bottom may actually be in for the year. But it's not that you know it's all going to be just uh, green grass from now. I do think some uh, some bursts of volatility. Uh, are still going to be there, and uh, you need to stay uh, cautious and prepared for the worst. Uh, thank you very much. That's it for this month. Uh, if you consider copying me, as always, please do. Remember that this is a long-term strategy, long-term portfolio that we're running. One-year copying period is an absolute minimum, but I do strongly believe that you know five years or more is basically what you uh, what you should be looking for. Uh, please stay patient and resilient through turbulences, and I'll hear you in a month. Thank you very much. Bye bye.